This is the final tutorial in Section 1 API Design. We've looked at different factors when building RESTful APIs for our Messenger application. In this tutorial, we'll wrap up and take an overall look at how far we've come and what that means. The tutorial page for this tutorial is going to list the API documentation summary for what we have so far. I hope the choices in the design approach for this API is clear to you now. If you're unsure of why any part of the API is a particular way, I encourage you to revisit the, re the relevant tutorials. Now that we have designed the API this way, let's look at what this means. Are we in a position to say that this API is fully RESTful? Remember in the first tutorial, I mentioned that this isn't a yes or a no question, that there is a spectrum of any way from not fully RESTful to almost RESTful to not RESTful at all. Well, these terms are hard to work with. How do you know how RESTful an API is? Well, there is one way to know, and that's a model developed by a guy named Leonard Richardson. This is called the Richardson Maturity Model. And it breaks down all the concepts that we have discussed so far into three different levels. Every REST API belongs to one of these three levels. The model also defines a level zero, which is not a RESTful API, okay? so. There are four different levels actually. One is not a RESTful API, and then three different levels for each RESTful API. It's not necessary that every API score highly as per this model, but it helps to understand this model when designing any RESTful API so that at least you know where you stand and try to make it better if possible. Let's start with level zero. I hope you're familiar with some of the basics at least of a SOAP web service. The way a SOAP web service generally works is that there is a URL called the endpoint where the service is exposed, right? There's one URL and that URL receives all requests from the client. If you were to write a messenger API as a SOAP web service, you'd probably have one URI, which is say server name slash messenger, right? This URL receives all the requests. How does it know what to do? How does it know what operation to perform? How does a client tell it how to do different stuff like looking at messages or deleting content? Well, that happens in the message that's sent to the common URI, right? The message contains both the operation that needs to be performed and the data that's needed for that operation. For example, the XML here could create a new message, right? So there is a create message uh, portion in the request itself, which has the action, right? And the delete comment request would be sent to the same URL would look like this, right? So there is a delete comment in the request itself. And that's how the single URL knows how to do these different things. So since the action is a part of the message itself, the same URI could work, right? And in fact, the same HTTP method can be used for each operation because all the details about the operation is in the request body. In fact, that's what SOAP does. The requests are always post with the post body containing all the information, right? This is level zero in the Richardson maturity model. This is often called the swamp of POX. This refers to the common use of plain old XML or POX to define everything that the operation needs, right? Everything is defined in XML, plain old XML. No HTTP concepts are leveraged for communicating this information here, right? Since everything is in the XML, there's no use of the HTTP concepts, the HTTP constructs to communicate information between the server and the client. This is level zero. And this design approach is obviously not what, something that you wanna do when designing RESTful APIs. If you were to refine this model and introduce a concept of resource URIs, you will reach level one in the Richardson maturity model, right? This is the starting level for RESTful APIs. The earlier level isn't even considered REST according to this model. We've designed resource URIs for messages, profiles, and so on. So if you did just this and nothing else, you stand at level one. Now you have message requests going to one URI, comment requests going to another URI, profile requests going to another URI, and there would still be information about the operation inside these requests because a single message URI would probably need to handle adding, an, adding a message, deleting a message, 
updating a message and so on. A single profile URI would handle updating a profile, getting a profile and all that stuff. So the message, uh, the request would still contain what needs to be done, but you've basically split uh, different URIs as different resource uh, URIs and you send the right request to the right resource URI, right? So that's level one. If you take the next step and introduce different HTTP methods for these different operations, then you've reached level two in the Richardson maturity model. An API on level two uses standard HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete to do different operations on the resource URIs. The URI specifies the resource that's being operated upon and the HTTP method specifies what that operation is. There also needs to be better use of the HTTP status codes and the right use of item potent and non-item potent methods for an API. If this happens, then the API is said to be at level two. Finally, level three is when you implement HATOS. That is, the responses have links that control the application state for the client. The client doesn't have to be aware of the different API URIs. All the URIs that the client would need would be sent to them in the response. An API that implements this is said to be at level three of the Richardson maturity model, and it is sort of considered to be fully RESTful. And there you go. Now we can look at any REST API design and easily identify which level in the Richardson maturity model it belongs to. Again, this is not supposed to be a strict rule. I encourage you to use this model as a guideline for designing your REST APIs, uh, as a tool for learning and understanding rather than a scorecard to measure your APIs. Uh, you may choose not to make every API achieve level three of this Richardson maturity model, uh, but this helps to understand what the theoretical ideal is. Okay, once again, uh, look at the API documentation for the Messenger application in the tutorial page. Uh, in the next section, we'll start looking at JAXRS and we'll start implementing this API. Uh, there is a lot to REST API design and the tutorials that we've covered so far have only scratched the surface. I encourage you to explore more about REST APIs, more about REST design, and treat these tutorials as a starting point rather than a complete learning experience. So this ends the first section. If there are any addendums, depending on the kind of questions that I get for these, course, for these tutorials, I will add subsequent sections, probably in text rather than video tutorials later. But in the next section, we will switch to implementation. We will start with JAXRS, we'll understand what it is, and we'll start writing code to implement the Messenger API that we've been designing so far in this section. See you in the next section, and thanks for watching.